All right, so I'd like to welcome up our next speaker. Our next speaker is Tim Murphy, who is the principal with Regenesis Group. A founding member of Regenesis Group, Tim has 25 years of experience in whole system site assessment and project planning. He specializes in the integration of ecology and culture to create a new potential for land, economic, and community development. Everyone, let's welcome Tim. Hello. Um, yes, I'm Tim Murphy, and... Uh, we're going to talk about a different, a different way to engage in community development than most people usually consider. There are several ways in. Um, one of the least conventional is to come in as the party that reconciles the differences between a developer and the community. Um, so in this particular case, um, in Vigny del Mar, we were invited in because there was a really fierce conflict between elements of the community who did not want the development, did not understand the development, um, and then the developer uh, themselves, who w was taking a confrontational approach, just pouring gasoline on the fire. Um, Sasaki Associates, international planners based in Boston recommended that we be engaged because we had a methodology for reconciling those kinds of conflicts. Um, actually, our methodology is preventing those kinds of conflicts, but in this particular case, we were going to come in and reconcile the conflict. Um, and so we were invited into the project, which was... Hmm which is envisioned by the owner as a gift to the city. The site had been used for more than 80 years as a petroleum storage site, um, and the very activists, many of the very activists that opposed the project um, saw to it that the municipality had the owner uh, shut down the storage facility. So this tank farm went south because the community was upset about the amount of pollution in the bay and what was happening. Um, and so it was leveled and the owner decided that he was going to create a gift and his way of doing that was to create a very green and clean neighborhood, a new neighborhood. Um, mostly second homes for um, high-end people from Santiago as opposed to Viña del Mar. But um, this was his notion of a gift to turn this into a clean USGBC-approved development in Chile. Um, the first thing that we told him was that he needed to be thinking outside of the fence. Um, clearly this project was designed without much else in mind. And uh, toward that end, he needed to be committed and engaged in the process. He needed to be thinking about the project's relationship to a nested series of um, entities. First the municipality, and then the watershed, and then a regional relationship. And that in looking at that and exploring what was the potential for that relationship for this project, he would begin to get some insight into what it is that he could offer the community that was opposing him. We told him that we would be taking him from a transactional model, which is the one that he was operating from, to a reciprocity model. In a transactional model, the idea is that from inside the fence, you offer things to the community um, in the form of gifts or whatever that helps the community appreciate who you are. Um, 
in a reciprocity model, you expand the fence to embrace the whole of the region. You look at a web of relationships and how can you create mutual benefit for all of the players in the region. So the third change proposed was that he needed to have an aspiration of a high enough order that it would enroll the community. And creating a new green neighborhood didn't cut it. So having a relationship that dealt with creating system-wide benefit um, from the standpoint of example, from the standpoint of uh, exchange, was one approach. Looking at the potential of the region, how it had been expressed in the past, um, not just historically, but prehistorically. Um, how was that expressed biologically? How was it expressed economically? Um, what was the environmental benefit uh, that different relationships had had throughout time? And what was going on in the community right now that small interventions could have a major impact? So by coming with your activating force or your aspiration from potential, it means that you have something of a higher order that can inspire many people. Most restraints occur in the realm of existence. They come from reactions to what it is they think they're seeing, what it is that people think that they're hearing, regulations that may not apply to innovation, innovative practices. And by dealing with them in existence, you come up with compromise. A compromise is effectively a lose-lose. A reconciliation is a win-win. You look at what's behind the restraining forces, what's behind the regulations, what's behind the restraints that people are putting up. Why are they so angry? What is it that people are experiencing that is generating that? What is it that they come out of from the standpoint of their history, their cultural values, their love for the place that you can actually connect to? And how does that align with the activating force or the aim of your project? So that was what was up for um, a major change for this business. You know, my, I'm a field person. I do all my stuff in the field. I figure out these places. I work with people. And my daughter said, you need to get out. Why don't you go to this conference and give a presentation? So bear with me here. I'm taking my daughter's lead. And uh, she's our business manager. Just stumbling around. So with the help of a community organizer, a very uh, adroit person, named Maria Elena Ducci, we identified the different stakeholder groups in the city. Some of them were in opposition, some of them were neutral, some of them had no idea what was happening, but they were in the process of growing. And by looking at our investigation of place and the story that was emerging about what was the potential of the place, um, we felt that they could be enrolled as stakeholders. And we began interviewing them um, by going to just the leaders, going to the people. Ideally, the kind of person that we wanted to talk to would be people, five minutes? Okay. People who had their feet in one or two groups, people who had an understanding of what was happening. Um, and... We got some sense about what, was, what were their restraints, what were their complaints, but what we were looking for was what is it that they want? We know what you don't want, but 
can you talk to us about what it is that you want? Can you shift the conversation from existence to potential? Um, and we engaged in a successional process of uh, having that discussion. Started out with just the leadership and then invited larger groups into the conversation, um, larger um, representations of the membership, and then held public events where we talked about things, but the agreement was that if there, if there was something that people didn't understand or they wanted something to happen, or they thought that maybe there was a problem, how could they change that from being a problem to a potential that reconciled that problem in the conversation? How could the whole conversation be about the potential that would be mutually beneficial for everyone? The principal concerns that emerged initially were pretty serious things. I mean, the cultural resources have been destroyed by earthquakes, um, a whole series of things that um, there was a financial disaster that occurred after the exit of Pinochet. Uh, that was a very disruptive thing. There, there is tremendous amount of angst in there. And this was a process that was completely unfamiliar to Chileans. They don't engage this way. They don't, they don't open up and share in public. They don't express what it is that they care about. Um, so, um, after defining some of these initial concerns, we started moving through a series of events that moved into conceptual design for what is the potential for relationships. How could these things be modeled in the project? And what could the project be doing for the community that would increase uh, the agency of the community to realize things. How could the community design a program for operating and maintaining a cultural center if the, if the developer supplied the land for a cultural center? If the developer supplied the architects for a cultural center how, what, what was the process of doing that? What were the legal needs of a youth sports organization, urban sports organization that did parkour, slackline, and um, break dancing and skating? What, what were the opportunities for them to find land so that they could, do, could have this practice? Could it be part of the architectural display of the, of the project. Um, so there were things like um, the usability and relevance of the place, the, the um, I can't read the slide. Um, pardon, these are in Spanish, but um, mobility was one of the principal considerations. Um, how do you get everyone enrolled ar around the problems of mobility? And the, the notion was that a project, one project can't do that. You need to have everyone engaged. So that was one of the collective efforts, restoring the river that went through town. Um, uh, considering different ways for the city to differentiate itself and the project in support of that differentiate itself. So largely this exercise was an opportunity for the project to differentiate itself from any other project in Chile. And it was breaking ground from the standpoint of the way that it engaged the public. Uh, it was turning heads. It was, um, so the idea w was that this place moved from being a destination to being a hub of connectivity in uh, Viña del Mar. And it was a hub of connectivity for the neighborhoods above on the top of the cliff to get down, walk down to the beach. It was, a, it was seen as um, a way to uh, support increase in mo mobility and to create a transit hub. 
Um, it was seen as supplying some of the core elements of culture that was lost after the regime of Pinochet and to begin to build public identity, but it was seen not as a way to just do that here, but to be an example for how things could be done throughout Vina del Mar. Um, one of the concerns that emerged later on was, well, you're going to build this here and to make money to pay for the remediation, um, you're saying you're going to obstruct our views. So particular attention was paid to that. Um, having a mercado that was a, a, a marketplace that was attached to the fishery and to the f farms in the region was another important part. Uh, currently, all of the produce and fish go to Santiago and then have to come back and everyone gets seconds. That was a really critical thing for restaurants. So the project was completely walkable. Um, it was a way for people to get from one place to another and for people to get through the area to other parts of the region. Uh, the last thing that is being addressed is economic development, local economic development in creating um, regional businesses that um, add value to produce and create livelihoods for people. Um, one of the guiding principles here was an investment in any one of these five capitals saw return in the other five capitals. So the financial capital saw was directed towards social capital, a change in understanding of the community, of what was possible and how it would work, an appreciation for natural capital. It was the way to design new and appropriate infrastructural capital and to build human capability and capacity and an understanding of what are the new vocations and callings in the development of human capital so that people could actually take agency in developing their own livelihoods and their own course of their activities. I'm done. Briante, I'm finished. <laughs>